Hey guys, it's Kaylee. Welcome back to my channel. I thought I would do a quick TBR video today just to go through all of the books I plan to read this month. I am off work at the moment, not working from home, literally just sitting at home trying to fill my time so I've decided to pick quite a lengthy TBR this month. Might not get to all of these books but I like to just have um, some possibilities. So yeah, the first three books that you can see on the cart already are three books that I set as my TBR last weekend for Simon's book hibernation readathon. So I managed to read two out of the five books that I set um, for that readathon. So failed slightly but these are the three that I have left. So we've got Americana, Pachinko and The Girl in the Tower. So I think I'm going to keep these on here for now because um, this is a series that I'm currently in the middle of so I'd like to keep going with that one. And then these two are really highly um, anticipated reads for me. Americana I've had on my shelf literally since it came out, I think 2014. So definitely want to get to that one soon. And then I bought Pachinko quite recently, but um, I'm super excited to get to this. This is a very Kaylee book, so I'm going to keep those on there just now. Then I have this stack on my lap here, which is all women's prize books. So I've actually already started this one, the most fun we ever had. So this is probably one of the ones that I was most excited for when the list came out. So this is a family drama, um, multi-generational. I think it follows four sisters and their parents. Um, yeah, really, really excited about this one. So started that already. I'm only like 100 pages in, but super excited for that one. And then the other three that we have are Dominicana by Angie Cruz. I think this one is like a coming of age story, touching on the immigrant experience. So excited for that. Then we have How We Disappeared, which similar to Pachinko, this is like an Asian centered um, historical novel. And I think it's got a dual timeline as well, which is another one of my buzzwords. And then Hamnet by Maggie O'Farrell, which I pre-ordered and very, very excited to start that one. And actually, in the same vein, I bought a copy of Hamlet by Shakespeare because I wanted to read the play before I read Hamnet. I don't think the book is about the play at all. I think it's just about Shakespeare's family um, and his son. But I wanted to read the play. I've wanted to read Shakespeare's plays for a while. I think I studied one in school, uh, The Merchant of Venice, but I've not read any since then. So Yep, excited to read this and see what I think about it. This is one of his most famous plays. So there is that one. This is going to get quite full. The next little stack of books that I have are all books from series that I'm in the middle of. So as well as The Girl in the Tower, I'm trying my hardest to any series that I'm in the middle of read a book from that series every month because I have a really bad memory when it comes to books. And if I let a significant amount of time pass in between books from a series then I just completely forget like everything and I have to reread them. So the first one that I've got is The White Princess. So this is one of Philippa Gregory's many books from her big long series. I think this is maybe like the fifth or sixth one maybe um, that I've read. These books are okay like I enjoy them quite a lot. I think the first one in the series was my favourite um, and they've kind of gone you know slightly downhill from there but the last I think two or three in the series actually were all from different perspectives but across the same time period so the same events came up like two or three times um, so I think that's why my enjoyment kind of lessened a little bit and I've seen that in a lot of people's reviews whereas this one continues the story so um, yeah hopefully it'll be a little bit more interesting so I'm excited for that one. Then we have Catching Fire by Suzanne Collins so obviously the sequel to The Hunger Games I read The Hunger Games again last month um, in preparation for the prequel coming out next month I think so um, yeah I'd like to just carry on with that so that I am all caught up before the prequel comes out. And then lastly, I have Shadow Kiss by Rochelle Mead. So <clears throat> I actually never read Vampire Academy when I was younger. Um, I think I read the first one and then never carried on, but I have all of the books and I've not gotten rid of them because I thought, you know, one day I'll read them. Um, and actually they get quite high uh, ratings. A lot of people really enjoy them. So I started reading the series a couple of months ago and I actually really enjoyed the first one. I think for like a vampire YA series, it's actually quite unique. Um, and yeah, it was really, really enjoyable, the first one. Second one I didn't enjoy quite so much, but I'm hoping that it gets better as the books go on. So excited for that one. 
And then the final stack of books that I have, we're going to have to put around the back. Um, these are all of the Australian books that I have on my shelf because of course April is Aussie April, um, which is a readathon hosted by Jacqueline over at Six Minutes For Me and Doris from Aldi Books. Um, yeah, really excited. And to be honest, I've not usually had a lot of Australian books on my shelves, but I've recently picked up quite a few um, based on recommendations on Booktube, um, especially from Natalie over at My Reading Days. So. Yeah, these are all books pretty much that I've picked up on booktube recommendations. So yeah, really excited to get to these. Um, I've got, yeah, six books here. Sorry guys, my camera died and I just had to change positions and plug my phone in. Um, but I was just about to talk through the Australian books. So the first one that I have is There Was Still Love. So this one has been long listed for the Stella Prize. I think actually it's on the short list now too. So really excited to read this one. This was one of the ones I was most interested in after seeing the list. So yeah, this is a nice little short one. So looking forward to that. Then the next one that I have, I think is one of Natalie's favourites actually. And this is Flames by Robbie Arnault. I know that Simon actually enjoyed this too, because he talked about Robbie's new book that comes out this year, I think. Um, so he mentioned that he really enjoyed this one. So excited to try that one. Then the next one that I have is The Choke by Sophie Laguna. This author has been recommended to me so many times um, and I think she definitely sounds like an author that I will absolutely love all of her books. Um, this one I think follows a young girl, it's like a coming of age story but there's a lot of talk of the natural world in there too so definitely a lot of Kaylee buzzwords so I'm excited for this one. And then the next one that I have is The Life to Come by Michelle de Kretzer. This one I think follows four different characters and they're all kind of separate stories but then they intertwine um, in some way in the end. So it's kind of one of those books that's almost like a collection of short stories but then they come together as a novel in the end. So really uh, excited for that. I love books that do that um, as long as they do them well. So yeah, I heard a lot of good things about this one. The next one um, I think is definitely a more harrowing read. This is The Lost Flowers of Alice Hart. Um, and again, similar to the others, there seems to be a theme here, but I think this is a bit of a coming of age story, references to the natural world. I think in this one, each chapter um, has the name of a different flower um, and it talks about those flowers meanings and then how that relates to um, the young girl's life. So yep, super excited for that one. I think I've said that for just about every book here. Um, but the last one that I have is a Tim Winton. So this is Cloud Street. I actually have owned this book for so long before I even knew who Tim Winton was. Um, and then when I realised, I was super excited that I had this on my shelf. Um, so I think, I mean, Tim Winton is a classic Australian author, but this says that this is his great family drama, covers 20 years, um, and it's a story of life and love. So yeah, super, super um, excited to pick this one up because as you can see and tell from these books, I do love a family drama um, and yeah, I've just heard a load of good things about Tim Winton. So got to start somewhere. So this is where I'm going to start with him. So that is that. So I think if I've counted right, that is 16 or 17 books. So yes, a bit of an ambitious TBR this month, but I thought, you know what, if I end up being off work for the whole month, then... I might as well get some books read. So that's my plan for this month. Please let me know what you're planning on reading down in the comment section below. And if you've read any of these books, let me know what you thought of them. I would love to know. Thank you so much for watching and I'll speak to you in my next video. Bye.